Hello friends, welcome to Codage. In this session, we will see how to deploy and run Spring Boot application in the Kubernetes cluster with MySQL as a backend database. Here we will first create a Spring Boot application. We will develop application to store exchange rates into the MySQL database. Exchange rate are nothing but conversion rate of a source and the target currency at particular date. So in the table, we will have columns like source currency, target currency, amount, and the last updated date. Once this is done, we will dockerize this application using Docker and deploy it into the Docker. We will create a Docker compose for it. We will have a Docker container for our Spring Boot application and we will have one more Docker container in which we will pull the latest MySQL image from the Docker Hub. And our application will connect to a MySQL using Docker network. Once this is done, we will create a Kubernetes configuration and deploy it into the Kubernetes cluster using Helm. So setup will look something similar to this. Here we will have ports for our Spring Boot application and the MySQL and services to access them. Now let's deep dive into the configuration. So let's say this LO region is your system in which you have Kubernetes cluster. So here we are going to create a Kubernetes cluster using Minikube. So in the cluster, we will deploy a pod for a MySQL and we will also create persistent volume claim and a persistent volume. So why do we require persistent volume here? So because pods are transient, so if they terminated, the data stored in the local volume in the Docker will also get deleted. So to retain our data stored in the volume, we can bind volume from our local system. And in the production environment, you can bind volume with the external storage system. For example, in AWS, you can use EBS or EFS for it. So if the pod get terminated, Kubernetes will create a new pod and it will automatically get binds with the existing volumes. After this, we will create a cluster IP service to access the MySQL pod or MySQL database. Then our Spring Boot application pod will get connected to MySQL using cluster IP service. So here, why we are required to create a service? So if you don't create a service, then your application will need to connect to the database using direct IP address of the MySQL pod. And let's say due to some reason, pod get terminated. Then our application connectivity with the database will get break and which will cause the issue in our application. So if you have a service, then our application will get connected to the database using service IP address. Then if MySQL pod get terminated due to some reason, in that case, Kubernetes will create a new pod and service will forward that traffic to the LD pod. And there won't be any issue with our application connectivity. We will also create a service for our application and service type will be of the type load balancer. And user will be able to access our application using load balancer service. So in the production environment, you can create or attach external load balancer service. For example, AWS application load balancer. Now let's deep dive into the Kubernetes configuration that we are going to create in this demonstration. So first configuration we are going to create is a secrets to store our database secrets. So we are going to create secrets of the type OPEC and we are going to create a three type of secrets. First will be the password for our MySQL database that will be our root password, then username for our database, then the password for our database. After this, we will create a deployment configuration for our MySQL pod. So this is how the deployment configuration looks like in which we will have a container and in the container, we will define the image to get it from the Docker Hub. So this is the environment section. Here we define the env tag in which we define the credential for our MySQL database. So we define the credentials like a root password and the password for our MySQL database and we get this credential from the secret file. And this is how we define the MySQL database name. After this, we will define the persistent volume and the persistent volume claim. So in the persistent volume, we define the host path tag. And in the host path, you can define your local system library path here. After this, in the persistent volume, we define the capacity and the access mode. So access mode will be retry it once and storage will be 500 MB. So this is how we define the persistent volume. Then next is a persistent volume claim. So what is a persistent volume claim? So this is a kind of request you made to the Kubernetes. 
So in the production environment, you can have multiple persistent volume created by your administrator. And you can request to the Kubernetes what kind of configuration that your application is required. So here we are defined the access mode as a retried once and resource request we want the storage of the type of 500 MB. So based on this configuration, Kubernetes will find the particular persistent volume and this persistent volume will get bind with the persistent volume claim. Now let's understand how we are going to bind persistent volume claim in the deployment. So in the deployment configuration, we define the volumes and in the volumes, we define the persistent volume claim name. And the claim name should get matched with the name that we defined in the persistent volume claim configuration. After this, we, in the container, we define the volume mount and in the volume mount, we define the name that should get to match with the name that we defined in the volume section. Next, we will define the service of the type cluster IP in which we define the selector and selector name should get matched with the label that defined in the metadata section of your MySQL deployment file. So this is how the service will get bind with the MySQL pod. Next, we define the target port and target port will get bind with the container port. The service will receive traffic from the external world on the port 3306 and from the port, it will forward the traffic to the target port and target port will forward the traffic to the container port. Now let's understand what kind of configuration we are going to define for our Spring Boot application. So here, this is the application deployment configuration. So here we define the container section. In the container, this is our image name. And this is the image that we are going to pull from our local system. Next, we define the container port on which we are going to expose our application. Next, we define the environment section. So in the environment section, we define the database connection configuration. So first configuration will be your Spring Data Source URL. So what is Data Source URL? This is your database connection. So this is how your database connection looks like. So it will have service name and the port and slash YT lecture. That is our database name. So how we get this uh, service name and the port? So we have already created a configuration for your MySQL service and the same name and the port we can use in our database connection name. So at the end, this is how our configuration will looks like. So ping application will connect to the cluster IP service and cluster IP service will get connected to the MySQL pod. So the application will access the MySQL pod using cluster IP service. So next configuration will be your database username and the password for your MySQL database. And from where we are going to get these values? So this credential we are going to get from the secrets that we are already created, right? Next, we will create a service for our application. Service type will be of the type load balancer. And this will be our selector configuration. And the name in the selector should get matched with the label that we defined in the application deployment configuration. And based on this name, service will get bind with the Spring Boot application pod, right? Next, we will define the target port and target port will get bind with the container port. And next, this is a port on which it will receive traffic from the external world. So this is how the final configuration will looks like. Now, next, we will move on to the demonstration. But before moving on to the demonstration, these are the few prerequisites. So first we will require Docker for Docker engine. Next we will require Minikube for creating Kubernetes cluster on our local system. The next is a Helm. So Helm is required to deploy our Kubernetes configuration on the Kubernetes cluster. Next is a kubectl command that is used for the Kubernetes. And you can use your favorite ID and the JDK. And last we will require MySQL client. Here we are going to use dbvr. So let's move on to the demonstration. So first we will create a Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer. So our project name will be Spring MySQL Demo. Okay, so we will give the same name into the artifact as well. And the build system we are going to use Gradle. JDK version we are going to use 17. And let's add dependencies. So first dependency will be for our REST API. So it will be Spring Web. 
next we are going to use jpa for our database operation so let's add dependency for the jpa that will be of type spring data jpa next we are going to use mysql so for that we will require mysql driver right let's click on the generate okay so our project is generated so let me open that project into the intellij okay so our project is ready so let's go into the build.gradle file and remove this version so we are not going to use versions for our application next what we are going to do we are going to pull the mysql image into our docker and we will set up mysql for our development so let me open the terminal so here i have already started the docker on my machine so before pulling mysql image make sure that you have started docker on your system so to pull the mysql image command will be docker pull mysql with the latest tag so it will take some time to download the image okay so our image is downloaded so what we'll do next we'll run the mysql container so command will be docker run hyphen d then name for your container so container name will be mysql hyphen container okay next we will require the mysql root password so mysql root password will be root and the port that we are going to expose will be 3306 colon 3306 and next is a your mysql image name so image name is mysql colon latest okay so run this command so docker container is started so if you go docker ps so this is our docker container id and this is our docker container name so our mysql pod is started so what we will do we will connect to this mysql using mysql client so let me open the db here okay so to connect to mysql click on this plus icon here click on the mysql click on the next and here ip address will be 127 dot zero dot zero dot one okay keep the database field as a blank and password will be root and username will be root okay port will be 3306 so here if you click on the test connection it is going to fail okay so it is giving error as a public key retrieval is not allowed for that what we will require to do click on this driver properties here and you will find the option for allow public key retrieval so make this as a true okay now let's go back into the main click on the test connection you can see we have connected to our database click on the ok click on the finish okay so this is the connection that we have created recently so let me open this if you see we have one default database that is sy that is sys okay now let's go back into the IntelliJ and we will develop our application. So here in the application, first thing we are going to create is a model class. So let me create the model class. Our model class name will be exchange rates. And I have already code for the model class. So let me copy it here. So this is how our model class looks like. So in the model class, this is a class name that is the exchange rate. So we define this class as an entity. Then this is a table annotation. And using this table annotation, we're defining the name for our exchange rate table. So our table name will be exchange hyphen rate. Next, these are the properties that we are defining into the table. So first field is a transaction ID of the type integer. This will be auto-generated ID. So this is going to generated by this at the rate generated value and the strategy will be generation type dot auto and using this annotation jp will generate the transaction id automatically in the table next we defining the properties like source currency and the target currency which will be a not null type 
next we define the amount so that will be our exchange date amount and last is a last updated date so this date will be of the type sql okay and next these are the setter and the getter for our entity class which are auto generated so after this we are going to create the repository class to interact with our database so let's create a interface for that so this will be in the repository package and the class name will be exchange rate repository and this will be of the type interface okay so here we will extend jpa repository and type will be exchange rate and the integer okay so from where this integer will come integer will be this unique transaction id right so here we will define the first method so we need to find the record based on the source currency and the target currency for which we will require to define the custom method here so what we are going to return that will be exchange rate and the method name will be find find by source currency and target currency okay so this is we are defining the custom method based on this name that is find by source currency and the target currency jpa will generate the query and based on this query it will fetch the record from the database so it will require two parameters first parameter will be source currency and second parameter will be target currency So next we will create a service class to interact with the repository so our class name will be exchange rate service and it will be in the service package okay so let's define it as a service and let me copy the code for it okay so what we are doing here we are auto wiring the exchange rate repository right that we have created earlier then we are doing a two operations here to add the exchange rates into the database and to get the amount from the database so this is the method in which i am passing the exchange rate that is a json data and this is the method that we are going to use to save that object into the database so here we are going to use save method that is implicitly provided by the jpa okay so this is the method coming from the root repository which is a super interface of jpa repository okay let me close this so next we are going to get the amount from the database based on the source currency and the target currency and here we are going to use the same method that we have just created into the repository that will be find by source currency and the target currency to which we are passing this source currency and the target currency parameter next we are checking the condition here if the exchange rates are null then we are returning as a zero else we are returning the actual exchange rate amount okay so you can define any logic here you can uh, raise the exception as well if you don't find the exchange rate but we will define here as a zero if you don't find the exchange rate into the database now next we will define the rest controller to perform these operations so let me create a class for that class name will be exchange rate controller and that will be in the controller package okay and let's give annotation as a rest controller and let me copy the code for it so here what we are doing so first we are doing auto wiring for our exchange rate service so this is the class that we just created previously okay so we are doing the auto wiring using the added auto wire annotation next we are defining the two apis that is to get the amount and to add the exchange rate so we are using the get mapping so this will be a get operation and we are defining the method that is get amount so in the get amount we are defining the request parameter with the added request param annotation 
and here we are passing the source currency and the target currency so this parameter we are going to get from the user next we are calling this get amount method that we define into the service class right next we define the post mapping this will be of the type post api we are defining the method name as a add action rate and here we are passing parameter as a add the rate request body of the type action rate so what does it mean user will send the json data to this api and this rest control will automatically convert that json data into this exchange rate object so using this add the rate request body annotation and in the method what we are doing we are just calling the add exchange rate method that we created into the exchange rate service and this exchange rate service will call the save method that is from the exchange rate repository and from where this save method is coming from that save method is coming from the jpa repository okay now next what we will do we will define the configuration to connect our mysql database so let's go into the resources and click on the application dot properties so let me copy the configuration so i already have a configuration for it so these are the configuration for to connect our mysql database so what we are doing first we are exposing our application on the port 880 so this will be a default port if you don't define this port still it will be exposed on the port 880 by default by the spring rest controller if you want to change your port you can define that port here okay next these are the mysql configuration so here this is our driver name next this is our data source url so data source url will be this is our database url and the port and this is the database name that we are going to create and what i am defining here create a database if not exist equal to true next is our username and the password for our mysql database next is a spring jpa hibernate ddl auto update and the last is a spring jpa show hyphen sql this is to show sql queries into the console okay so our application configuration is ready now let's open the main class of our spring boot application and click on this run button okay so our application is started successfully you can see it has created a table with the exchange rate and it has created columns like transaction id then the amount then the last update date then the source and the target currency and the primary key will be transaction id right now we will test our apis so let me open the rest controller so these are the api we are going to test from the postman okay so let me open the postman okay so i am using the different uh, software for it you can use the postman so postman will also have the same api so our first url will be localhost 8080 and the add exchange rates so this is what we define into the controller right add exchange rate so let me call this api and we are going to send the json request so json request of the type will be application slash json and this is how json request looks like so we will have a source currency we will add the usd as a source currency then the target currency we will add the aud as a target currency amount will be 1.50 so this is a hypothetical amount and last is a last updated date so this is the date that we are going to add into the database now let's click on the send button okay so it is giving the error so let's change this to the post because we have created the api of the type of post so click on the send okay so it is working so as we have written the same exchange rate that we are adding that's why it has returned the exchange rate from the api okay so now we will go into the database to check this okay so this is our database so just click on this refresh button okay so this is our database name that is yt lecture now click on the sql editor open the sql editor here 
and just select the table select star from our table name will be exchange rate okay you can see our data is stored into the table so amount will be 1.5 this is a date that we have added into the api this is the source and the target currency and this is the transaction id that is auto generated now next what we will do we will dockerize this application so in the database operation if you want you can define more operation as per your requirements so let me stop this server now and next what we will do we will add the docker file for our docker configuration let's create a file in the parent directory and file name will be docker file make sure that you make the app as a small letter okay let's create this file and let me copy the configuration now let me explain this configuration so what we are doing first we are using a from tag here we are using the open jdk version 17 as a parent image next we are defining the working directory slash app then this is our jar name okay so we are going to create a jar in this folder that is lips in the build folder and we will copy this jar into the apps directory next we are exposing our application on the port 8080 and the last is to run the application jar okay so let's build this application so click on the terminal and command will be gradle w clean build okay build is successful now if you go into the build folder here and the lips folder you can see our jar is created now next what we will do we will add the docker compose file so because our application is dependent on the mysql we will create a docker compose file and we will define the configuration into the docker compose file so let's create a file file name will be docker hyphen compose dot yaml okay and let me copy configuration for the docker compose file okay so let me explain all the configuration so i am using the version 3.8 next we define the services so first service that we are going to create is a mysql and here image will be mysql hyphen sorry mysql colon latest so this is the same image that we used earlier in the docker container and container name will be yt hyphen mysql hyphen container so here you can give any container name next is a environment so in the environment we define the credential for our mysql database so this will be your mysql root password then the mysql database and the mysql password and these are the configuration that we are going to use from the environment variable okay so we are not required to hard code that credential into our docker compose file and how to get this configuration we will see in the moment okay next i have already commented this mysql user because it was giving some issue on my machine but in case it is not giving any issue you can uncomment this command okay next we are doing a port mapping here so this is our ports that we are going to use for your mysql next is a volume so this is our volume configuration for our mysql okay next this is a network so how we are defining the network so this is our network name and if you search this network name i already defined it in, at the end of this file so in the network section i have defined the spring mysql network and driver that i am using as a bridge okay so this will create a bridge network between our mysql service and the spring boot application service so this same name i am using here in the network section okay next is a spring mysql demo service this is our application service here i am defining the build so build it will use from the docker file okay next context will be the doc because the, it will use the docker file from the current directory okay so our docker file created into the same directory that is spring hyphen mysql hyphen demo in the same directory we have the docker compose file 
let's say if you define the docker file into some other directory in that case change this context directory accordingly next is a container name so our container name will be spring hyphen mysql hyphen demo hyphen container so here you can give any name to your container next is a depends on tag so this is very important tag as we are dependent on the mysql database that's why we are defining the mysql so from where this name is coming from this name is coming from here okay so this name should get match with each other next we are defining the port mapping okay so we are exposing our application on port 8080 and next is the environment section here we are defining the mysql database configuration so data source url will be mysql colon 3306 so from where this mysql coming from that is the same that we define in the services that is mysql and the port will be this port that is 3306 next our mysql database name okay so this database name will come from the environment variable okay next we are defining few parameters so first parameter is create database if not exist that we already see in the application dot properties file and these are other parameters required for the database connection okay and this last parameter is very important that is allow public key retrieval equal to true so we already saw this error when we connected with the database using our mysql client okay so make sure that you should add this tag at the end of your data source url next we are defining the username and the password which we are going to get from the environment variable and here as well we are defining the network and we are using the network that is same network we are defining for our mysql so next what we will do we will define the environment file to define this environment variable that we use in this docker compose file right so for that we will create a new file in the parent directory file name will be dot env so let me copy the configuration okay so these are the configuration that we are using in the docker compose file right so first configuration is mysql database that is our database name so we are using that configuration here that is environment parameter in the database url right next we are using the mysql root password then the mysql user and the password and that we are using here in the environment section of our application right next we are using the same thing in the environment section of our mysql service okay now what we are going to do next we are going to deploy this application into the docker so let me open the terminal so here we have already started the mysql container now we are going to stop this container because in the docker container sorry in the docker compose file we have already defined the configuration for our mysql service and we are starting mysql service on the same port and this container is also running on the same port that is 3306 okay so it will cause some issue in the port binding so let's stop this container so command will be docker stop and your container name that is mysql container okay let's cd into your project directory okay so this is our project directory and let's run the command to create the docker image so command will be docker build hyphen t your image name so image name will be spring hyphen mysql hyphen demo and the tag that is latest one okay so you can give any name to your image here and tag to your image and let's add dot at the end and let's run this command so it will take some time to pull the image okay so our image is created so let me clear the terminal and if you want to check your image just run docker images command okay you can see this is our spring application image and this is our mysql and the open jdk image okay let me clear this now next we will run our application so command will be docker compose up so using this command you can run your application
so you can see our application is started so let me open the postman and we will use the same api that we used earlier so click on the send button okay so our json data is stored into the table and to verify this we have already created the api for that let's go into the controller and this is the api to get the amount from the table right so let me open the postman let's copy this url and path will be get amount and it requires the parameter that is a source currency and the target currency okay so what is the currency that we have added source currency will be usd and the target currency will be aud okay click on the send button okay you can see we have added the 1.5 as a exchange amount okay this is the same amount we have added into the table now you, you can also connect to your database using the same method that we saw earlier okay now next we will deploy this application into the kubernetes cluster so let's go into the intellij and here we are going to create the kubernetes configuration so let me open the terminal and let's stop our application i forgot to show the queries that you can see in the console so if you see here as we requested the amount from the table the same query is printed into the console for which we have added this property into the application dot properties that is spring jpa show hyphen sql using this property because of this property it is showing the query into the console right now let me clear this terminal now what we are going to do we are going to use helm for creating the kubernetes configuration so command will be helm create and the directory name so directory name i am giving here as a yt chart okay so helm will create the kubernetes configuration into yt chat directory so let's run this command it has created the kubernetes configuration so if you go back into the intellij let me close this you can see it has created the folder with the yt chat name and you can see it has created this configuration okay now let's delete this all the configuration we will create our own configuration so let me delete this configuration so first change we are going to do into the values.yaml file so let's open this values.yaml file and let's delete all this content from this values.yaml file and let me copy the configuration so here first we are defining the replica count for our pods then we are defining the database name for our mysql so database name will be yt lecture next we are defining the configuration for our spring boot application in which we are defining the image configuration so image name will be spring hyphen mysql hyphen demo then the pull policy will be if not present and tag will be the latest one next we are defining the conf volume configuration for the mysql so here we are defining the persistent volume claim in which storage size will be 500 mb and if you want to use the gb the syntax will be one gi like this okay next we are defining the persistent volume here storage size will be 500 mb and path on the host will be like this okay so replace this with the actual path on your host machine okay and this is the mount path tag okay and these are the values that we are going to use in our templates that we are going to create in a moment okay so first thing we are going to create here is a secret file so let me create a new file our file name will be secret.yaml and here we are going to define the secret for our mysql database so first secret will be to store the root password so this is the name of your secret this is the value for your password and type will be opac so all this secret will be of the type opac next we are defining secret for the username and the value will be root next we are defining the secret for the password with the root as a password now next we will create the deployment file for our mysql pod okay 
so let me create a new file here our file name will be mysql hyphen deployment dot yaml okay so let me copy the configuration for it okay so let me explain all this configuration so these are the same configuration we see in the introduction section so here we are using the replica as a one then this is the selector okay then this is a template section and this is a container section okay and here we are defining the configuration for our mysql so this is the image tag that we are fetching the latest image and these are the configuration that we are using from the secret file okay so these are the same configuration i already shown in the introduction section one thing i want to show in the configuration that is the values so this is a database name that we define in the values section okay if you see here this is the database name and in the deployment file it is using the name from the values.yaml file okay dot values dot mysql dot database name what is the meaning of this this means read the database name from this values file with the mysql tag if you go into the values.yaml file this is a mysql tag and from the mysql tag read it from the database name tag so in the mysql tag read it from the database name tag right so this is how it read the configuration from the values.yaml file you can see mount path we are reading from the values.yaml file that we have defined here okay next what we are going to do we are going to create the persistent volume and the persistent volume claim for the mysql so let me create a file for that the file name will be mysql-pv.yaml and this will be configuration for the persistent volume here we are defining the storage with the storage size then the access mode and the host path and same it is reading the storage size from the values file so if you go into the mysql volume in the persistent volume section this is the same mysql volume in the persistent volume section right and if you go further it is reading from the storage size right it is reading from this storage size right now next we will go into create the persistent volume claim so let me create a file for that file name will be mysql-pvc.yaml and configuration will be like this so kind will be persistent volume claim then this is a name then access mode will be retried once and this is the storage that we are reading from the values.yaml file okay so our mysql configuration is ready next we will create the configuration for our spring boot application so let me create a file for that so our file name will be spring hyphen app hyphen deployment dot yaml and this is how the configuration looks like so kind will be deployment then we are defining the selector here then we are defining the container here and in the container this is our image name okay so this is the image name that we are reading from the values.yaml file right then this is our container port and this is our environment section okay so our spring boot application configuration is also ready next we are going to create the services for our mysql and the spring boot application so first we will create a service for the mysql so let me create a new file file name will be mysql service.yaml so configuration will looks like this so kind will be service type will be cluster ip these are the ports configuration and this is the selector so the selector name should get matched with the selector that you define into the mysql deployment.yaml file that is in the that is in the metadata label section okay so our mysql service is ready next we will define the service for our spring boot application so let me create a file for that file name will be spring hyphen app hyphen service dot yaml and configuration will looks like this so kind will be the service type will be the load balancer and these are the ports configuration and the same thing selector should get matched with the label that you define into the metadata section of your 
Spring Boot application deployment file. Okay. Now, if you go into the chat.yaml file, this is your chat version and this will be your application version. So, whenever you update your configuration, don't forget to increase your chat version. And next, we are required one more configuration. So, if you go into the Spring app deployment.yaml file, so here in the data source URL, we are reading the data source URL from some other configuration. So I'm creating this configuration in another file. So let me create a new file here in the template. So file name will be underscore helpers.tpl. So this is the file normally created by the Helm chat that we deleted initially. So let me copy the configuration for it. And here what I'm defining, here I'm defining the name that is my spring app dot full mysql connection url and here i am creating the url for my database connection okay so what i am defining here this is our release name and this is our service name okay so this is the same name that we define into the mysql service let me open the service configuration of mysql okay so this is our service name right this is the same name i am using into database url okay then this is our port of our mysql database so i am defining the same port here okay next i am defining the database name so database name coming from the values.yaml file so if you go into the values.yaml file here you are defining the database name mysql dot database name so i am using the same thing here mysql dot database name Next, I am using the configuration that we see in the Docker Compose file. So this is create database if not exist, that is true. And the last one is, don't forget to add this configuration, that is allow public key retriever equal to true. Okay. So our configuration is ready now. Now we will deploy this configuration onto the Kubernetes cluster. So let me open the terminal. So let me clear this window. So before deploying the Kubernetes configuration on the cluster, let's create the cluster first. So for that purpose, we are using the minikube. And the command will be minikube start hyphen hyphen driver equal to docker. So let's run this command. So it will start the minikube on your local machine and it will create the Kubernetes cluster for you. And in that cluster, we are going to deploy our application. Okay, so Minikube cluster is created. Okay, let's clear this. If you want to see all your configuration, like if you see in the configuration, we are using some properties, right? We are not able to see the actual values in the configuration. But if you want to see all this configuration, there is one command that is provided by the helm. So command will be helm template and your directory name. Okay. And if you run this command, you can see all your configuration with the actual values. So this is your secrets, right? Then this is your persistent volume claim. This is your persistent volume with the actual values that is getting from the values.yaml file. So before deploying your Kubernetes configuration on the Kubernetes cluster, you can verify your values into the console using this helm template command. So let me clear this window. And next we will run one more command. So command will be eval minikube docker hyphen env. So what is the meaning of this command? So let's run this command first. So what is the advantage of using this command? So whenever you define image tag into your configuration that is in the Kubernetes configuration, it will try to pull the image from the Docker hub. But in our case, we have created our Spring Boot image on our local system. And we want to pull the image from our local system, okay? For that purpose, you are required to run this command. So next, we will build the Docker image for our Spring Boot application into the Minikube Docker environment. So command will be the same. That is docker build hyphen t. Then our image name. Image name will be Spring MySQL hyphen demo colon latest and dot. Run this command. Okay, so it has created the image in the 
minikube docker environment so let me clear the window and if you want to see the image you can run the command minikube image ls okay so you can see your image is created here let me clear it now what we will do next we will deploy our configuration so configuration can be deployed using the helm command command will be helm install your chat name and the directory name okay you can see it is deployed successfully now if you want to see all the configuration you can run the command kubectl get all okay so you can see it has created the two pods one for the sql and one for the spring boot application then it has created the two services first service for the mysql of the type cluster ip and sec second service for the spring boot application of the type load balancer this is the deployment and this is the replica set okay now let me clear this window again now what we will do just run command kubectl get services okay now if you want to connect to your database you can run one command so this is the cluster ip service right so this is the internal service so you can't access this service externally to access this service you can run the command minikube service then your service name that for the mysql service and the hyphen hyphen url so hyphen will be two times and let's execute this command okay so we can access mysql database externally and you need to use this same url so let me open the dbvr and let's use the same ip address so let's click on this add button here click on the mysql url will be 127.0.0 dot one port will be five three zero five five okay and let's test this connection so before moving on to the testing connection go into the driver properties and make this option that is allow public key retrieval to true okay and let me go into the main password will be root let's test this connection okay we are able to connect to our database so this is our database connection that we have just created so let me close all these unwanted windows and this is our default database in which we have created the yt lecture database and here you can see it has created the exchange table so let me open the sql editor now next we will test our application so let me open the terminal so if you see we have created the load balancer service for our application and this service also not accessible from the outside of the kubernetes cluster okay and for that you need to run one more command so let me open the new terminal and the command will be minikube running okay and just run this command okay so it has started the tunnel and because of this tunnel command we can access our spring boot application so let me go into the postman and click on this api that we have already entered into the postman so click on the send button okay so our data is stored into the database and let's run the get api so click on the send you can see we are getting the rates from the table now let me go into the database and let's select the data from our table okay you can see we are getting the data from the database as well okay now if you want to see the logs so let me go into the terminal let me stop this service if you stop this service your connection will get break into the mysql client so i am stopping this service and if you want to see the logs so this is our spring boot application pod and if you want to see the logs command will be kubectl logs hyphen f and your pod name okay so this is the logs from your 
application and this is the queries that we are use internally okay so we have successfully deployed the spring boot application with the mysql database into the kubernetes cluster for this first we have created the docker compose file let me open the docker compose file okay so here we define the multiple services first service was a mysql then the spring boot application service then we define the network for the network connectivity between these services then we created the kubernetes configuration using a helm chart then we deploy this application into the kubernetes cluster so that's it for this lecture thanks for watching the video